Hello and welcome back to Snack Play Love where we continue our series of going through all the things that my parents have forced me to bring back from their house which are from my childhood. Um, this one is fairly topical, should have done it for Halloween but um, as a result of Halloween I started getting adverts on Facebook for the new version of Ghost Castle which has mm, certainly has a cheaper look and feel than the one that I have um, but turns out I misremembered some of mine so I figured why not get it out on camera for the first time in probably about 20 years and see what it's like. There we go. So this is the original UK MB Games um, version. I don't know what year it's from. This is a common theme. We'll try and figure that out as we go along. Um, I got this as probably a Christmas present present it's very rare that i got things that were advertised on tv that were toy toys but my parents and grandparents knew that i liked board games so a big wrapped up board game was frequently my christmas present so essentially we're going to be working through years and years of christmas presents um ah instructions on box and like scruple scramble yep it's not in mint condition this is very much uh, a real copy and not a um bought from a collector um yeah copyright 1985 milton bradley or mb games um tell me how to put it together which is going to be very important because i have not done this for years um no idea how long this one's going to turn out to be but let's try it anyway so the board isn't folded i've forgotten about that it is just um footprints for the various things so we've got to get that to line up with all the bits get that underneath we have the original hand-drawn bats, cave, claw, ghosts, and haunted forest. So we start in the haunted forest and work our way around. But you have to put the mechanics together first before you start putting the tower together. Otherwise, none of the traps work. So are we on screen? Yes, we are. So um, here is a little thing that will become more obvious. We might actually play a game. I mean, a fake game anyway. Um, then we put the steps on the side of the tower. Which tower is it? Oh, that's this one. Right. So it's very hard to see because it's basically super cheap grey plastic. Uh, feels a lot less high quality than I remember it being. But um, in 1985, I was six. So I don't think I got this the year it came out. We had a lovely little shop uh, run by family on Brownells High Street that tended to get the overstocks of last year's games. Um, I know one of the ones that I'm going to do came from there. But I suspect that it either came from there or from the co-op. I'm going to have to stand up and do this because it doesn't appear to want to clip together. I don't remember it being this awkward, but maybe it's expanded over the years or something. I'm very like cautious of trying to break it here as well. Ah, topping worked. Yeah, do skip 30 seconds if you wish to um, see the actual game. Oh, there we go. Let's see if we can put that on the thing. Yeah, there we go. So then plug the other side of the tower so that it's backing onto the forest. You can do this the wrong way around and it makes it a different game, but um, I don't think that was ever the intent. There is some little dents from where it's been put together. Then hoping that it doesn't fall to bits, slide this in. Something just fell out. Oh, we'll put that in again afterwards. See, I didn't think that could fall out. Now we may have um, the ability to do the trap. Oops. Yeah, I think I might have snapped a little bit off as a child. Yeah, it kind of fits. I've probably jammed that in more than once in my life. 
Um, and then put the coffin lid on, if we've still got that yet. I'm surprised all the bits have been here so far. Um, coffin lid skulls from being dropped down the, um, the tower. I'm holding it slightly too high, aren't I? Um, I'm going to move this for the moment. Sorry, Mr. Red Pirate. So, the knight's axe goes into place and he goes, insert opposite short wall in same manner. Um, is this the entrance? It must be. Yeah, he goes under the stairs. It's very hard to do this and see. There we go. So, yeah, you can just about see there's an axe there. I'm going to have to hoist the camera at various points to um, show you bits. Um, opposite wall has the trap basket and the trick mirror, which is good. That's the shortcut. If you can get somebody to get through to there before you get there and take the shortcut, you usually win. But um, there is quite a lot of traps and tricks in this game. Um, this needed to go on first, didn't it? The floor. Oh no. It's saying just um, around. There we go. Right. So now, if I put this back in the centre of the playmat, which is to tell me where the camera points, you might actually be able to see the damn thing. So, the basic premise of the game is you have some really scared children. You have blonde scared child, other blonde scared child, scared child with dress, and scared boy with no stand. We do have a bit missing. Oh no, the collectors will go mad. So you can't play. So let's just choose generic boy and generic girl to go at the start. Right. Let us read the rules. Climb the stairs. Make sure the coffin lid is open. Yes. Done. And the axe is raised. And give each player a scared stiff mask and place the skull next to the coffin. The skull is the best part of the game. It's this little rattly skull. It's got a marble inside it, a ball bearing. And it does glow in the dark. We have played this in the dark and it works quite well. But I'm betting that it doesn't work as well now. Ah, we only have one D6. I thought you needed two. Uh, put it in the forest. Throw the dice, move forward that number of footprints, then spin the spinner and do as followed. So, yep. Yeah. So, we can... Oops. Do this. The spinner, pre-constructed, is here and basically has says, throw the dice, drop the skull, or put a scared stiff mask on. So, we roll a two. Oh, we're there. That's not very exciting. And then we spin it. And it says Skull. So we get to take Mr. Skull. I think he had a name, or we named him anyway. And you drop him down the thing. And you can't see what happened. He randomly came out and he triggered the trap on the other side because you went in the basket which is good because that opens the trap door and it doesn't do anything to anybody else. If you're on the red bits when it triggers, even if it doesn't hit you, then you are said to have been affected by it because sometimes it's not very reliable. It's like mouse trap. So that one made the ax fall and anybody on those two red squares would have been squished and something bad happens. I can't remember what happens, but we probably never played it like that. Uh, any player standing on a red danger footprint is hit, knocked over, blah, 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 must go back to the nearest blue footprint. So you go back to the start. I can't see it. I'm in the way. There's the blue footprint. So you can basically go back to the start of the zone. So once you've cleared a zone, then that's where you go back to. So you just reset to that bit. So essentially it was going to roll skull. He goes one, roll the thing, spin the thing. Two, spin the thing. I'm sure we're not supposed to be rolling two D6. OK, 
gosh, no. I say, as a game, it's probably like great, but um, yay, six, I get to go into the next room. So the next room, the trap is this board. So you can either take the shortcut along this board here to get into the next room faster. And the blue footprint is actually slightly further into the next room because of that. Or you can go the long way. Now the shortcut is four, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I suppose it's half, but realistically, it's much more fun to do this. Oh, I think that used to be a bit more pingy. Let's put him on this end. There we go. So now he's been smushed, scared by the ghost, goes back there. The only other mechanic that we haven't really looked at is the scared stiffs masks, which I found it quite scary as a child because the idea of you as a, as a child essentially being turned into the bad guy from the Scream movies 10 years before the Scream movie existed was quite, quite traumatic. And the art in this, considering it's 6 to 12 years old, it's like, oh no, 13-year-olds, they're not going to think this is cool, they're going to be into Freddy and Jason. Um, I think that um, it's a little bit more traumatic than they intended. But let's flip this. I haven't pinned it down. They do give you um, things to pin it down. But that's an extra step we didn't really need. So now we're into the, the wine cellar, which is basically... Um, it's not an empty room, but it's, it's, a, it's the simplest room there is. You essentially get to here, and if you're on here and the skull happens... Oops. Then you immediately jump through to the other green which is basically like skipping a turn, two turns, which is good. Um, but if when it triggers, she's on the red square. And, and the theory you flip them out of the way quite convincingly, but realistically, it's this, the cardboard isn't quite as sharp as it once was. Um, then you get to the bit of the game, which takes as much as the rest of the game combined, because every player, is putting the skull down here. Oops, that was the axe on the other side. I do think it dominates with the axe. That was the floor. That was the trap. Maybe I need to plug the holes in my hands and... No. Well, essentially, it should occasionally come out of this one and go bouncing down the steps. Now, if you're anywhere on any of these red ones, you automatically go back to the blue. And from these, it's not too bad. But if you're here, then, um, hey, she just fell down the stairs, broke her legs. Excellent. So realistically, it takes quite a long time to get up those stairs. But once you've got up those stairs, you do the one, two, three, stand on there, and then the coffin lid falls off. Now, Originally, when everything was set up perfectly, that would just flip the coffin lid shut. And then, of course, this skull can't go down the stairs, can't hurt all the other children. And um, the game ends. But the modern version, there are some slight differences. I wish I'd got an easy way to show them to you, but my guess is, if you're watching this, you've seen the new version of the game. And we're curious how it all looked compared to the old one. So I shall leave you to find that video. But the art's really good. Considering this is like pre-Hero Quest and things, the moulding is decent, and I think it's held up quite well as an artefact, in the same way that Mousetrap has. But it's not a good game. It's just snakes and ladders. And if you sort of redrew it so that landing on certain squares gave you a one-in-four chance of having to rush back, um, then it would be a very fun game at all. And because there's the two scared stiff masks on here, which are basically just miss a go, and footprints are have another go, so you rush ahead. I think they said it. They say, yeah. You are now free to throw the dice on your next turn and move again. Oh, you you have you don't just miss one go. You have to keep going until you roll the footprint, spin the footprint. The dice is throw again, move forward. Yeah. If you are wearing a mask, however, you cannot move. 
Okay, well, I hope that was interesting to somebody. It's gone on a bit longer than I thought it would because I decided to kind of play through the game. If you were to actually play the game, it would probably take about an hour, which is a great way to keep the children occupied, but not a good way to fill up YouTube. Um, anyway, uh, if you want to see what other games I've got upstairs, there's quite a few classics, ones that I haven't really seen for years as well. Um, give us a subscribe, and then if we do manage to put them up, you'll see them. Bye.